beginning, there were five crystals of creation. They were scattered to the far reaches of wild space and protected by guardians. One such guardian was Belenac, an ancient black dragon. Killed for his knowledge by the Illithid and Milky, he placed his consciousness in an orb and placed it on a ship. Now, his adventurers search for the other crystals before they fall into the wrong hands. Our adventurers finished up their night of revelry with the space gnomes. Jay woke with a mysterious paper in his pocket that read Mind Wipe and discovered that one of his memories has been smoothed over. Kurgan got a new fan club and Tex became president of it. Lee continued to find ways to deal with a toxic relationship and found, herself, found himself and Tex transported to for a brief minute to a beach on some faraway sphere. They fought off nine illithid nautilids, ships with the help of a Kindori whale, some gnome delphinids fighters, and a strange insect humanoid. Entering the phlogiston, they warped themselves to the Dominia Sphere. Will our adventurers head to Ravnica, unravel all these very loose threads, or will they be clutching their last remnants of their ship as it breaks apart? Only time will tell. You guys are just about on the cusp of the Dominia Sphere, which houses all of Magic the Gathering settings. I'm just keeping it all together for, for easy purposes. So your ship is heading towards that area. Um, the sphere itself looks like it's a crystalline, you can see reflections of other stars, you can see it's solid, but it's see-through. And as you get closer to it, you can see there's different colors of fog, is what it kind of looks like to you. It's like this fog inside, different colors. And you guys are heading towards it. So, Jay, what are you doing? Hmm. Jay, uh, other than piloting the ship, would probably be meditating, trying to think about what exactly that memory was, if he can get glimpses of it. Okay, so you want to go uh, kind of do some meditating in your room. So you want to give, you can give me a wisdom roll, please. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for a 18. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, uh, for some reason, doubt that's going to happen, but I believe in the dream. 14. 14. So while you aren't getting uh, that from memory and, and digging in there, you do hear a faint signal of a communication going towards you. And in your mind's eye, you see a sort of staticky figure of Tanu Luxley, who's meditating. And what you can see, he's, he's in a tent. Um, and he's pretty disheveled looking and he is in a med meditative stance just like you are and he says oh it is good to finally talk to you how are things well i i've forgotten a bit of my memory well that is that is interesting what what makes you say that I know my own mind. There's a bit of time I cannot recall. Hmm. Um, of nefarious means? I do not know. Hmm. All I know is that I woke up in, with a bit of paper in my pocket that just said mind blank. And... Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Well, there is some very nefarious magic out there that can erase memories. Be careful out there. Here in Draj, things are not good. The slaves keep disappearing. Pe those that have slaves have been hoarding them and keeping a close eye on what we have left. We have about only 20% of the slaves that we once had. And we're holding our own here on Draj, but it is not getting good. There's much hunger 
And our new so Sorcerer King, he's, he's young and ambitious and has not done very well in the battlefield. And there's many losses here. We could, we could always use your help here, Indraj. I'll bring it up with the others. Good luck to you, Jay. And let me know if you need my assistance in the future. And his very staticky image, because you guys are very far away from each other, um, disappears. And you are left alone in your room. I will go find a, technically the entire party, but I think for some reason only Kurgan and Lee will be free. So Kurgan, what are you doing now? Hiding. Hi, okay. so, <laughs> oh yeah, right. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can guess what from. Yep. Can you give me a? You want to give me a stealth roll here? Yep. All right. Here's a stealth roll. Oh, no. Eleven. Eleven. All right. We'll see how. Let's see what we, what I can roll here for my perception here for three. So they're been actually very busy with work. It looks like um, they have been put to task and are cleaning a lot of different areas via the ship and haven't had much time to give you much mind here. So Okay, thank uh, the gods for that. Yep, so what are you going to be doing? Uh, well, I think I'm just going to be hanging out on the underside of the ship because of the way gravity works. Yes. Certainly. I'm just going to, like, we have like 50 feet of hemp and rope each, don't we? I'm just going to say that I made like a little rope ladder that goes all the way around uh, just in case we do end up entering a bigger, stronger gravity and I get sucked from the bottom. Yeah, it's no problem. You, yeah. could, you could definitely be, have been working on this in the eight plus hours of voyage that you weren't on the wing. So it's no problem. Yeah, sweet. All right, and Lee, what is, what's your character doing right now? Um, Lee is still in his room, um, hanging out with Suli. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Is there anything that you uh, want to accomplish with Suli, or? <laughs> I mean, I want to get rid of her, but like <laughs> in this moment, nothing. <laughs> yeah, there's not. There's really not much you can. Uh, yeah she she right she right now is been pretty quiet today uh and has been in her box kind of there's one point where she closed the lid of the box and you could hear her talking um yeah then i guess i'll try to leave my room at some point but i'll probably just rest for right now okay okay so towak is up on top of the ship by the minor helm he's just keeping an eye on things. But you guys all have a full rest. You are on the cusp of entering this sphere. What do you guys want to do? Well, so uh, we didn't have time for a long rest, did we? No, you did. Plenty of time for a long rest here. I, we oh, okay. Here so all of you could rest. I thought that you said it was... Yeah, a long rest is eight hours, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I was thinking it's a full day for some reason. God, I'm just confused. <laughs> just eight hours. All right, sorry for that. No, no problem. Well, I mean, Jay will, like, just put the hood of his, uh, his cloak up and give Kurgan one of the Sending Stones, and he'll keep one of the Sending Stones. Like, get us all prepared. Um, Everyone has healing potions, right? Uh, let me check. Uh... Everyone check their character sheets. Yeah, check your character Do -do -do -do. Sheets. Yes, I've got oh. one potion of healing. Oh, yeah. oh I got heck and two. Uh -oh. oh, that's still good. <laughs> Does uh, Lee have a potion of healing? I don't... think so? Hmm. Uh... Uh, I'll give you. Hey, Jay will... uh, here's, here's an idea. Let's let's go ask Tex if he's willing to lend any to us. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh well, let me just go see here. Potion <laughs> of healing. <laughs> uh... Wow, he has so much. Yo, he has the staff of healing. Um, yeah, he does have the staff. 
He has the potion bag. Oh, he does have a healing potion. potion of antivenom. He does have a... He does have a healing potion. Oh, this is zero one there for me. So you just got your... You're not... You're gonna knock on the door. <laughs> He's gonna open it up. What? Was that a sound effect? What? That was pretty oh. good. <laughs> Okay. I did not expect to hear that, but that was pretty good. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, you, you, you see... There's Tex. He's on, he's on his, uh, he's on the toilet. What, what are you guys doing? I'm going hey! Right. Knock next time! They deserves his privacy! <laughs> okay. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and what... Uh, you guys taking some stuff off of him? You're gonna borrow some stuff here? Just make sure you cross it off mm -hmm. his, his list here. Yeah, I'll take the, um, we'll give, uh, his po one potion of healing to Lee. You got it. Will do. Alright. Um, we'll get rid of that from him. Alright, fine, but you got a nick. You got a knock next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Okay, so what else are we doing here? What else we got going on? I don't think, I think that's everything. Jay doesn't really need to prepare. He put his hood up. So like, that's the one thing he can do before. Yep. Okay, so you... Oh, he'll uh, get out his uh, a Vengeance, his quarterstaff, so he can uh, so walk around. You guys are outside the sphere. You're going to need to enter the sphere. So somebody needs to pilot the ship through the sphere into... I did, uh, Dominion Sphere. Could we ask our good pal to do that for of us? Of course. Of course you can. He's, he's waiting for orders. Um, if you'd kindly send us in, please. Alright. Well, I'm done with the first throne. Might as well sit on the second. <laughs> oh, Te I'm sorry, but Tex, this, this, is, this is not a spot for you. Why don't you go uh, hang down with the uh, girls it. and do episode two of Kira <laughs> And, uh, and, that sounds and, fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, and, and yeah, and he and he goes, uh, and he's and, he, and he's out. And he leaves. Okay. And, and it, oh yeah, and his bird, and his bird comes following him, and he leaves, and he's down below. So uh, Toak gets in the minor helm. He's like, all right, let's do this. He sees some arcane power coming from him. Uh, the chair lights up. And you guys are moving towards this sphere, and you think, like, oh gosh, we're going to collide with this sphere. But as soon as the tip of your battering ram touches it, a circle, a blue circle forms around it. Opens up, and your ship slides right through. And what you see as you enter the sphere is you are sort of like in a, like an artery, where the fog is of one sphere is on the left and then all of a sudden there's a different colored fog on your right of this pretty wide tunnel that you're going through it's like black um it's like the space in between two um two planes and just as soon as your ship enters this sphere you see a bright flash from your teleporter and they're standing on the teleporter is someone familiar to you, Jay. It's Jace. And he dusts himself off and he turns and he goes, Ah, Jay, it's finally good to see you in person. I'm glad you could make it. Uh, Jay will give him a wave. Yep. And he's like, uh, So uh, there's some pressing matters here, and I know you guys are heading to my home away from home, Ravnica. And I'm here to guide you there. I'm just going to slowly lean into uh, Jay and just whisper, Who is this guy and where did you meet him? Uh, in my meditation. Ah, so you weren't, you weren't crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, that's still up for debate. So he's like, he's like, and, and I believe you're Kurgan. And this one over here is Lee. Nice to nice to meet you. And Towak gives a wave. And yep. And this is Towak. I've been trying to catch up on all your guys' names. 
It's nice to finally meet everyone here. Uh, you must be wondering what's going on. My name's Jace uh, Bellerin, and uh, I've been working with Jay on his meditation and becoming sort of my my pupil, if he will have me. So I really I have something to talk to all of you about, and we need to talk about the spirit stone. See, you guys are after all these crystals of creation, and one here in this sphere is the spirit stone. Um, but a plane walker, planeswalker, had taken the gem and used it to break free from a very powerful magic artifact called the chain veil. And as this planeswalker was able to break free from this artifact, the spirit gem disappeared. And its mystery is, it's a mystery where it landed. I do really not know. But Ugin, who Jay has met, believes it's still to be on Ravnica. And we need you to find it. We need you to bond with this crystal of creation. Uh, I'm, uh, Kirgan's just going to raise his hand a bit. He's going to be like, hey, so quick question about those crystals that you seem to know much about. Is it a problem if more than, if one per person, like, I guess, attunes to more than one? No. Or is that even possible? I don't think it's possible. I. Okay. I'm out then. What you're doing is you're bonding yourself to the material plane and of that particular place. And so you have been bonded by a crystal of creation already? Uh, yeah. Well, then you are bonded to that material plane of where that crystal has come from. Oh. So, but if no one is bonded by this crystal of creation, if what might happen is if the if the material plane is thrown a flux one of you who has not been bonded or if none of you have been bonded to this it could wipe our sphere off the map and it is my that... job to get you to the crystal as soon as possible but we do not know where it's at okay that doesn't sound uh, good do you have any questions anything you need answered you have any leads on where we could find this? The last I knew is this object was taken from a particular person as he attacked Ravnica. The object was lost and then rumored to be found by a particular planeswalker and this woman used it and it was the last known of you know, it was last known with her, and as she used it, it disappeared. So it could be anywhere in Ravnica. But I need, I need to go to these other planes. I need to figure some stuff out, and I don't have the time to look for this item. And since you guys are already bonded by these crystal of creation, I think, I think you are the ones to find it. I think that there's a reason why you are here. Well. If there's no more questions you need from me, I'll just point you in the right direction. And as he does, he, you see the fog on one side kind of start to clear up. And there is a planet off in the distance. And he's like, there, there's Ravnica. And he points to the planet off in the distance. And you've seen planets before, some red, some this planet is interesting it's all one kind of grayish color there's a little bit of green here but it's really this gray color from this distance and it's like there you go guys let me show you how to get there and and towak uh kind of edges the ship in a certain direction i'm sure one of the people using the wings turns turns the ships and you guys are now heading towards Ravnica the planet and as you get hmm. closer and closer and closer that gray that you see starts turning into like it looks like buildings 
it's the whole planet is one giant building. And there are multiple buildings, cities, but some have are green, but the gray covers everything as you get closer and closer. And Jace is like, well, my time's up. Anything else you need from me before I head out? Uh, would it would it be weird for a tiefling to be down in Ravnica? Because I know in some places we just didn't really see many, you know, different races. I just want to know if I will stick out like a sore thumb. No, actually, uh, you'd be right, right in with the Rakdos clan. Just, just watch yourself oh, okay. when you're around them. So don't feel bad about that. Actually, you might see a little bit more tieflings than you are accustomed to. Oh, all right. Oh, and anything else you need from me? You have any money we could have? <laughs> 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 that is funny. Uh, yeah. Um, on that note, you're going to need to transfer your money to Zibs. They don't take your gold coins around here. But I don't really deal with money that much. So I'll see what I can do for you when we get down, when, when, I, when I meet you next. I'll get in touch with you guys. Is there anything else you need? Oh, yeah. One more thought. What is Spell it? jammers. Spaceships. Yeah, yeah. They're they're kind of like weather lights to me. We're we're not that far oh. off from the spell spell jammer uh, and weather lights. We were I think ever since this sphere, we discovered this sphere and we could get through it. It was only a couple of years ago, and we were able to finally understand that these planes had a an endpoint, and then we in Ugin. We're studying these spheres, and a simple spell got us through. And then I was able to see that this universe that we were in was so microscopic compared to all the other worlds out there. And the more that we study, the more that we see, we can tell that something is coming to a head, and it's going to happen in the Outlands. And I need to prepare before that happens. So, on that do, I'm out. And he disappears. Alright. You guys are now slowly heading towards District 10. Or the 10th District. And I will bring you to the map of the 10th District as you guys slowly edge your way down Jace kind of telepathically said something to Toak uh, in, about where to go. It's the Augustan Air Station. It, if you can see on the map, it's number six. As you descend down to this large tower, um, there's these ships that are landing and coming to and fro from this massive tower that has a ton of little, like, ledges out so these airships can get there you see the whole sit the whole planet is roads and skyscrapers and and it's built on top of each other and but as you come closer to the air station there's these birds it looks like a bat head with a dolphin tail and a and its air sac is keeping it up you've never seen so much traffic around in your life in the air. You look to your left and there's an angel uh, flying through the sky and landing somewhere off into the distance as uh, a bunch of men on giant eagles follow suit. Uh, there are several ships, uh, balloons ships with these goblins that are flying right by you and as they pass by you they they give you the middle finger as you almost collide into them as it descends off your ship needs to uh one of you needs to roll me a whoever's rolling the wing i'm gonna need you to roll me a sh uh, strength check of a 14 please as you're yo, yo come kurgan hey my job okay so uh Am I gonna am I gonna rage for this? 
You can, but you're going to get advantage anyways because somebody's going to be helping. Oh. oh, yeah, sweet. Okay, no need to rage then. Advantage. Roll it. 14. <laughs> what did I say it was? 15? You said 14. Oh, 14. Okay, so, yeah. So it was close. <laughs> you come down and your wing just narrow, nearly tips into the platform as you tug hard enough and you just get it. Just get it to land. And, uh, yeah. yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking around at all the air traffic thinking how much ground traffic there's going to be. And if uh, you guys remember... I'm from like a little rinky dink wandering tribe. Yeah. So I'm not very experienced with people. The most I've been around is like with you guys. Okay. So. Yeah. This, this is going to be an experience for Kyrgyz. Yes. And as you do, there's people everywhere. You had to nudge your ship just in to get a spot. There is a line of people waiting to go down this platform. Think of it like a parking garage as you're uh, going from one platform down to another, but you guys haven't gotten off your ship yet. Um, your ship docks, you quickly tie ropes. There's people that work the docks, and there are people in these white cloaks, and definitely of a guard orientation to you, of the way they're looking around, making sure everything, there's dock workers that are hurried up and grabbed the ropes and tied them together, and the dist district is yours. What do you guys want to do? I have no clue. <laughs> this uh, is... Hmm. Yeah, this is something. Uh... <laughs> So, we want to find this uh, shard, okay. and we know it's powerful, and we don't really know much about Ravnica itself, but what we do have is this little, uh, you know what, let me get it, and I just pull from like a, I go down to my room and bring out this weird sort of backpack contraption thing that I got. Okay. No. The it. one with the uh Yep, it's it's what is it? It's like a gas canister, uh two gas canisters in the back, and it's got these tubes leading out of it into these two gloves. Yeah, and it's Juzba. Yeah, Juzba. Yep, and it's written. Juzba. So you got it on the back there. So you Okay. You, yep. You do see a guy coming up, Jay, with your passive perception. He is kind of barking orders to some of these people with the ropes and he looks at you guys and he whistles and he goes, he goes, man, what happened to your ship? This thing's a mess. Uh, we got attacked, but we managed to fight them off. We were looking to get repairs, but all we have is gold. Is there a way to exchange that somewhere? Hmm. Yeah. We got some bankers that, that usually deal with that stuff. You can go find yourself uh, definitely in precinct one. You, but there's, they have, you know, shops all over here that you can exchange money uh, and currency for. You'll find some around. Just go, just talk the doors off. They'll take care of you. But you're looking for some repairs, huh? Well, I might be your man. Uh, what what is what does this man of ours look like? He is tall, six foot, and change. He's a little weathered. He's been around. You notice that his ears are pointed, but he has a human kind of face to him more than an elf. He's got a uh, pepper salt pepper hair. He's also beard, uh, like. Trim beard, kept trim. He's wearing leather uh, work pants and overalls, uh, and there's stains all over it. Um, and he looks like he is a craftsman. Now we don't really know about the exchange rate from gold to zibs, but um, can we like get like a, a quote? on how many zibs you think it will take to fix 
our uh, lovely ship here up? Well, if you're looking to get it fixed, I'm your man. But as zibs, I can give you some zibs, but I don't know what you got. Like, we get a lot of newcomers from all over, but uh, you got to talk to Orzov. I can give you the price in zibs, and then, then you can work the math out. I'm not much of a math person myself. So. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, sweet. So let me, uh, let me go look around your ship, and if you want. I won't go on your ship. I know how some people are. I'll just walk around the outside. Someone okay. who doesn't want to get on our ship? What? What are you guys wearing? What are you, like, are you guys bringing your weapons out? Are you guys leaving your ship here? And I'd like to know what you guys are wearing. Um, well, Jay is basically wearing a, like, Hooded cloak over a set of robes with a quarter staff as a walking stick. Okay. All right. Jay Jay doesn't look too threatening. Not threatening. What else you got? How about How about you, uh, Lee? I haven't heard from you. What What are you doing here? Um, bring any weapons. I already look terrifying. Um, just kind of like some overalls. Okay. And that's it. I'm not bringing any weapons. Okay. Genasi farm boy. <laughs> Genasi farm boy that can summon her trident, or his trident as soon as he wants. Yep. And uh, what about you, Kyrian? What do you got? I can. Well, I can hardly bring my my swords with me. Um. Oh, but I do have those uh, brass knuckles. A. Yeah, yeah. I'll have my brass knuckles in like a, a pocket in my pants. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I have. Okay. And you would love to see. And you guys step off, and the map that you're looking for is displayed all over the station. You see, like, there's a line of people waiting to get on this airship that is sort of like a Zeppelin. And you, this little kid is holding his mom's hand and saying, oh, Mom, I can't wait to get to the Millennial platform. I, it's, I've been waiting all year for this. It's amazing. And it, as you look off into the distance, you see there's this floating island that is just up above the sky, way above the Augustan Air Station. And there's these chains that are holding it to the ground way below you. Um, there's four chains that are just holding it down and it looks like there's some uh it's a touristy thing it looks like and there's uh these airships going to and fro of this uh this big platform in the distance jay's gonna ask around see if uh, anyone knows where they could find this this ores any of these ores obs okay you can give me an investigation oh Obviously, this is going to go great. Natural 20? Oh, that well, did go great. Oh, yes. yeah. And as you turn the corner, you see there is this... Um, it looks to be a machine with these dials and knobs. And there is a... looks to be a window. And it's all by itself a square machine. Think of like an arcade machine. And it says Orzov uh, Money Exchange. Oh. Hmm. Well, that seems convenient. <laughs> I see no problem with here. And it's <laughs> built by the Is It League underneath it. I see less problems here. No problems. <laughs> uh, okay. Negative now, problem. <laughs> now, does the construction of this... Uh, currency exchange vending machine looking thing uh does it look any uh at all similar to my uh my sort of gloves backpack dealio no no this is something totally different your glove backpack dealio is very rusted and old and looks to be like something that you could carry this thing is looks like uh like a square box with a window with a bunch of buttons. Definitely not like it. Okay, is it at least in common? Oh, um, not from what you can do. Oh, great. 
What language is this, I wonder? Oh, you yeah, is it? Common in language? Oh, yes, it's written in common. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's written in common. I didn't get that. So, yes, it is in common language. You can read it. Uh, what? Uh, Are there any lists of prices? Like a, uh, yeah, the list of exchange well, rates. Yeah, the, uh, you, you got to go up to the machine. You going up to the machine? Jay will oh, go up to the machine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it, there's, you go up to the machine, you see it says uh, push to start. And there's this big red button in the middle. Oh, those are always safe to push. Boop. All right. Jay this, will push it. This face, uh, a ghostly face appears inside this box. It's like, oh. Uh, I was just eating lunch. What's going on? What do you need? Uh, to exchange gold for Sims, was gold it? Gold for Sims, all right. Why don't you, let me see what you got. Here, and, and this, he pulls a lever and this little box uh, comes out from the side. Says, all right, put one in. Let's see. And don't try to, sh don't try to, uh, finagle us here. And let's see what we got. It will put a gold coin down. All right, and he closes it back up. You see him take the coin and he bites it. And he's like, huh, all right, all right, all right. Not too bad. Definitely not what, anything I've seen around here. And he puts it down and he, and he opens it up and the coin is still there. And you pick it up. Do you pick it up? Yep, go and grab the coin. a little bit of saliva that like is dripping on the side so you can tell like it really was bitten and he'll like, just wipe that off on his robe he yep. said like, for every uh for every 10 of those you add me one of those silver pieces that you got oh yeah i've, I've got a uh, silver and uh copper here as well if you want to check them yeah I just, uh, yeah. silver is 10 gold copper is 10 no wait sorry i had that the other way around <laughs> Ten coppers, one silver. Ten silvers, one gold. Yeah. yeah. If you want, for every for every ten of those gold, you I'm you're gonna charge you a silver piece for for a zip. Okay. Um. All right. And how much? Uh. All right. How much would you say? Like, uh, so ten zip is the same as uh, one gold. Yeah. Pretty much, it's a one to one thing. Yeah. Uh, so one one gold to one, one gold, gold to one, one zip. One zip. Yeah. And, okay. And for every zip, it's every ten zips or every ten gold you want to exchange, he's going to charge you a silver. Well, Jay will put in a hundred and ten gold coins because Jay has eleven silver on him. <laughs> okay. So that's a yep. So that's a hundred gold coming or zips going your way. He opens it up. Uh, kind of seems like when you go to the supermarket and you want to trade in your coins, you go to the coin slot, it, like, you, you pour it in there, it kind of like auto sorts in this little tally. He's like writing it up, he puts the piece of paper up to the screen. Anything else? Is that all you need? Is 100? I will look uh, 110 and I will look towards uh, Kurgan and Lee. Alright. Uh... We're definitely going to need more than that to fix up the ship, but for just keeping on us in case we needed anything, this this is probably enough. Yep. And he also looks at you and he's like, Oh, you might need to, uh, if you need a loan, I'm your man. You come over see me and I get you a loan, no problem. Whatever you want. No amount is too high for the Rorzov. Oh, okay, sweet. All right, so is it the same box, or is, yeah, do we ask for a specific yeah, yeah. face or whatever? Well, pretty much if you want to do, uh, I can get you in contact with uh, with our bankers uh, over at the Vescapa Bank over in Precinct 1. Uh, they, they're the ones, if you're going to take a high amount of money for for a loan, you're going to go through them. But anything small, yeah, you know, just re I can give you a loan here. Yo, can I make an interest check to see if this guy has anything even resembling the best of intentions? Oh, go right ahead. Like, like just how, it's not that, how badly is he trying to screw us? 26. Like, from the, 
that it's how bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're getting sketchy vibes from this. You're, it's sort of like the guys that uh, you see late night infomercials. You know. All right. You know, you're getting sketchy vibes. All right, so I can tell that the interest rate is probably like what, thirty percent? You don't, you don't know. You just know, like, all right, this guy's kind of shady car dealer, uh, you know, dealership man. Yeah, look, all the, a grandma used it to, you know, get groceries twice a week for five thousand years. Yeah, yeah that's. Nothing bad here. Nothing. No, oh yeah, nothing. Nothing bad going on here. So yeah. Ah, uh, you don't need to check the back seat just yet. There's no piles of blood. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's Come all on. It's all good. It runs. I'm just thinking of uh, Hades from the Hercules movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lee, as you're watching this, uh, a man runs up to you and grabs your 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 clothes and he's like you you do not belong here you're never supposed to be here you're punch the two universes you're mixing the two universes you're gonna end it all you're gonna end it all I'm, I'm pretty can sure. jay can jay yeah, punch him in the face as he says that like oh, right yeah, after he goes we're gonna let you're busy working this machine getting your, uh, your stuff so let's leave lee what do you want to do here I don't want to let him punch him in the face. <laughs> Jay's busy inciting and talking to this machine off in the distance. You're just like you're just like people watching right now, and this guy runs right up to you. Uh, punch him in the face for me, Lee. Uh, yeah. You'll do negative one damage. Is that what you want to do? You want to hit him? Yeah. All right, roll, roll to attack. Okay. Uh, hold uh, on. Finish your bonus plus. You roll to a hit. It's a. You'll do zero damage if you hit, and your attack bonus is plus two. So, so roll. Yep, roll twenty plus two, and his armor class is ten. So he's just wearing robes. Okay. So if I'm not using a weapon. You can just roll to the side and die Yeah. Because you have a negative two strength modifier. Uh, okay. That's why Jay wanted to punch, because Jay could do damage. Oh, I, okay. Well, I don't I mean, know I if I just... Always... You don't have to punch. Yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, no <kidding. laughs> I don't even, like, cause, I mean, what am I really going to say to him? So... Yeah, just shove him away. Get off of me. <laughs> oh, five? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. So, so you try to swing, and he's, like, too smothering your arms. You're trying to just, like, get a good move in, but it's missing drastically. And this, uh, this man over in the distance behind him in armor, uh, he's got this gleaming silver sword this perfectly pressed white outfit and with a red outlining um, with a with a B symbol on it comes up and he's like grabs uh, the man off of you and he's like leave these people alone I tell you why are you always pestering everybody around here I'm sorry these cult of the purists I'm telling you they just I, I, we, they're just weeds that grow everywhere now get I mean, turn Throws him to the side and kicks him in the butt, and he scurries off. Purists? That yeah. sounds a bit, um... What, racist? No. Well, I don't know. They, <laughs> like, for, for, they just showed up three years ago, and and they just don't... They want to keep everything separate, and they, they think there's two universes coming together for some reason, and they just want one universe to stay to itself. I don't know what the heck they're talking about. Uh, they just bother and pester everybody. S sounds like it. Yeah. They want everything to be the same. They don't want anything to change. Well, uh, nice to meet you folks. Sorry to, sorry about that. Uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye on you. All right, bye. Well, that's a good first introduction to the civilians of the city. Yeah, that was weird. At least the guards are a lot nicer than they, they are here. 
Or than they were on Drage, I mean. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Do you think city is the right term? Because from from up in the sky, it it looked like there was like barely any breaks in the city. It was all basically brownish gray. Yeah, it's like it's small, would, small, would, small cities or a big cities, you know. Yeah, would we would we call this just say the city or the planet? Because it, it it looked like it covered everything. Fair point. Anyway, we should get going. So. You, as you are doing your uh, exchange, uh, the man comes back and, you know, he's like, well, you guys, you guys got pretty hefty damage there. I'm a pretty good wood shaper, but that is a lot of damage. So. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. So how many hit points are you looking to get back? Because if just out of school here, it's going to be about 100 gold per hit point. A hundred gold per hit point? Then we're never purchasing repairs ever again. A <laughs> hundred gold or a hundred zib? Zibs. Because if it's That's gold... That's even worse. Then we huh. don't need to... <laughs> like, our hit points are, I think, like... Ooh, they're... I don't have it down on paper yet. Uh... Um... I can check. I don't think I have it down on paper in my notes. But I do know that it's like mid to low 100s and we only have 3500 we could i would rather buy magical items than get 35 hit points back did you say something okay. about magical items i got magical items right here and he opens up his uh, guy walks by he opens up his jacket and he's got a bunch of like twirly uh stuff for kids uh and different type of apparatuses that light up and it's like you would you like to purchase one any of them look vaguely interesting um one like more than just light up toys no they're pretty much uh it's uh, you push a button and a little helicopter flies out and then comes back that's pretty oh. cool that you like and there's stuff that you put on kids heads that like make different um if your mood sets your mood, it just different colors. That's pretty cool. It shows you. And we haven't gotten Timmy anything in a long while. Just ten zibs. Ten zibs for the helicopter. What do you want? Oh. Well. So expensive. Yeah, that is a bit expensive for us at the moment. Sorry, pal. Yeah. And, and you guys kind of look back in the, and you see the guy counting money in the machine. He's like, if you want a loan, we can get you a loan. No, uh, we're uh, No, 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 no. I think we're good. Uh, if, if we need a loan, we can always come back anyway. Mm -hmm. And the man who's fixing, he's like, oh, I, I didn't even introduce myself. Mine's Kayed. Uh, it's nice to meet you guys. I, I know it's expensive, but these ships, you know, they don't fix themselves. But uh, you let me know what you want, but I might be able to cut you a deal if you can help me out. Well, what do you need help with? Well, hmm, well, there's, there's a certain type of wood that a certain type of bird collects over in District 3, Precinct 3. Uh, it's Bird of Paradise. And they use their nest, this certain wood, and it makes great wood for for a lot of my projects. And it's high-end wood. Now, if you could get me some of that wood, eh, I could cut off about 20% off this cost. Um, I got a man there, uh, his name's Rex. He just opened up a, a guide business there, and he goes, he, go, send him my card here and tell him that you want to get some uh, wood from the Bird of Paradise Nest, and uh, and I'll cut some, some of that price off. And he flips you a card. Uh, Jay says, catches it. Yep. It says Kyed, a wood shaper, Augustan Air Station, lead mechanic. All right. Uh, just in Kirgan's mind, he's gonna think, I thought Birds of Paradise was a type of flower. 
Yeah, I could have sworn I made a flower crown with um, uh, Lee's friend with one of those. Mm. I mean, in real life, of course, the birds of paradise are both a flower and a type of bird, but <laughs> Jürgen don't know that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, out of character. Um, out of character, we need and in character. Uh, we need money. Well. Yeah, we really do. And this is away from the box now. Yeah. Um, I don't entirely trust Boxman. Yeah, his... Maybe he's, like, locked in there and he needs money to get out, so he's gonna, like, charge a high interest or whatever, but he's not very... He's not very good at hiding it. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, we could... We could collect the, the sticks and then be like, hey, we, we don't think we want to... Uh, repair our ship because of how expensive it is could we just get money in exchange we could try that we could also go around and see if anyone's offering our jobs oh yeah oh maybe this the thing in my bag it this is supposed to be from Ravnica maybe if we find someone who thinks it's valuable we could sell it maybe I mean, the, those Izzet guys, they made the, uh, the Izzet League, that's what it says, they made the box here. Maybe, maybe they'll be interested in what this is, or they'll know someone who would like it, I don't know. Hmm. Alright, um... Let's, uh, let's walk around, um, I have a hundred zibs on me, though. Appears it won't buy me much, and we'll see if I don't know. Buy your ten helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if there's a bounty board around while we head over to Precinct yeah. Three. Birds of Paradise interest me, but I don't particularly want to upset a group of people. Well, but before you go, you got to pay for parking. That has to be one zib per uh, four hours. Whoa. One zip per four hours, eight zip a day. No, six zip a day. I'll give him t 12 zip for two days. No problem. It's yours for two days. Well, make sure uh, make sure you pay up. And, uh, and let me know what you need uh, if you, you know, for repairs. And then he walks off. And as he does, and you guys are walking around, I need someone for your group to roll me a perception check. And it's got I want to do that. Over difficulty of a 22. Oh, I've Ooh. only got a plus six. Natural 20 for 35. Oh, oh, oh damn. wow. Wow. You see. <laughs> off in the I see God. Yes. I've seen everything. You see everything. <laughs> I see the birth of stars and the death of the solar so, system. First thing is, you see a poster that says the Boris Legion wants you with a figure, with a hand pointing in your direction. Uh, in the sayings, uh, for joining, it will give you 500 zips. Just for joining. Then you look over to your left of that poster, you see there is someone dropped a newspaper on the ground after just, uh, it was in between his, uh, his side and it slipped off and fell down and on the f in, on the front of it it says three people died or three people are killed serial killer question mark and you see uh, there's three pictures of three different people then you see off to the left you see this girl she's sitting on a barrel she's got a knife in her hand and she's just like sharpening this knife and she's looking at you, and as your eyes meet, she gets, her eyes grow very bright, and she darts away. That's not weird at all. Her, Should we give chase? Hold on, her eyes start, like, glowing? No, no, they grew in size. Like, like oh my god, surprised that you actually saw her. And, and she jumped. Yeah, we just... Gotta chase now. Zoom, Jay is off. Alright, okay. Hey, so. hey, wait up! And I, I run too. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's do a series of 
uh, skill checks here. So, Jay, let's go with you first. You may pick one skill check uh, right now for your DC difficulty. You're running through. What skill would you like to use first? Um, I think we should use, like, I don't know, like, if she darted off into an alley or how crowded it is, she, we could use like... Yeah, dumped off the barrel in the opposite direction for you. There's so many people to see, but that it's hard for you to see where she actually went to get to that area. What? Um, I want to use like acrobatics to try and like, with my character's like ability to now run up walls and stuff, to try and like parkour up to a spot where I could see where she is. Okay. And where she might be headed. Okay, so give me a 12 right here. Right higher. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, so what did you do? Um, so after seeing her dart off into the crowd, uh, Jay immediately like goes over to that barrel, hops onto it, and then just basically runs up a wall right by where that barrel is and perches... Um, like on a small rooftop just looking over the crowd. Okay, so she is going to right now roll a stealth check, right? And she's pretty damn good at stealth, so it's going to be a plus eight here to this roll. I mean, she can just sit on a... Wow, that's high. She can just sit on a barrel without anyone seeing her. I mean, she's mastered the skill of sitting so, so still that you no one yeah, can you, see her. Yeah, you <laughs> jumped up on the barrel to look and she just melded into the crowd. Dang it. My passive perception shall not help me here. Hmm. Any other skill that you want to apply here? Um, any other skill? I mean, I could make like a perception check to try and see her again, like no. as I'm... No, you already did the perception, so you can't redo it. So you did perception. I gave you three clues um, there. Three clues there. Uh, and for that 20. Can I like... Can I like use... I don't know, maybe... It's weird, but it's like... Insight to see like if any like... Like where the crowd is like... Mild, like more annoyed as if someone were pushing through them. Or anything like that. Sure, I will give it to you at disadvantage, but I'm going to give you a lower DC with disadvantage of a 14. 16. You did. So, pretty far distance, you see someone go, Hey! Get away from my car! And, and that's what you see off into the distance. Oh, uh, yo, Jay is going to zoom. Okay. What skill are you going to use? You can't use insight, acrobatics, or perception. Um, like, just straight athletics, just just stamina, okay, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, stamina, and DC's creeping higher, 15. Ooh, 24. Okay, you get over there to the, the cart, uh, and you see this person who's got cabbages in a cart with a, uh, a birdcage around it, and he's like, Did somebody just almost knocked over my cart as they went through here and they went into that door over there. To the door? Yep, points over to a door of some, uh, looks to be a store. Okay, so mm. what do you do? What, what skill you got? I, I, well, I would choose another skill. And it's not that I don't want to go, oh, I don't want a bad skill. It's I don't know what other skills I could choose for a race. Yeah, I've right. done athletics, acrobatics, perception, insight. Like, deception won't help me. No. Um, Maybe you could use uh, persuasion. Or, ooh, on what? On, on, like, we're in a city is the thing. Um. <laughs> what, are you, are you... what is that store like that store can I tell what it sells um, it's a it's a chocolate shop a chocolate shop yep. it sells chocolates this is super um, touristy I mean this is like tour, this is like an airport touristy place 
Can I use, like, uh, investigation to, like, try and figure out... Cause I'll, I'll fail this roll anyways, but I'll ha I have to try. Like, this girl, did she, like, from what I remember, did she, like, look like someone who would, like, either had the money or the was young enough to go to a chocolate shop? Oh, yeah, she was a girl. She would, uh, of, I don't know, like, uh, 12, 13... Uh, age, and she would definitely be in a in a, um, a chocolate shop, of course. I would give you that for free. You don't need to roll an investigation. Before I roll my next skill, can I go into the chocolate you shop? You certainly can. You walk into the chocolate. You do not need a skill for that. You walk into the, the door. About the door rings. There's people around uh she's still using that stealth check that she got so she's pretty sneaky right now if that's her and there's people lined up buying chocolates and perusing around the shop it looks to be a 20 by 20 store with one desk with a older lady and there's a little door open door there's no door but you can walk behind to where she makes the uh, chocolate. Dang it. I don't know quite. Hmm. I have skills, but like, I can't roll perception again to look for her. Nope. You can give me your passive, that's all you can do. 25. Very passive? Okay. Passive is 25. Okay, so you, you can, what you can see around here is there's Barely any disturbance, but uh, it, yeah, it's really hard for you to make out. Like when you walk into the shop, there's like nothing's wrong. It's a very quiet. Like I'm not, you know, like there's no disturbance. There's definitely people buying and talking and kids around and all of that. But uh, you cannot really make out any big loud noises or anything that causes you to like say, "Hey, this is where she went." Can I make an investigation check to, like, peer around, see if there might be any, like, odd things, like a secret door, or this isn't set up correctly? Three. There goes my luck. <laughs> there goes the luck. Nope. You you're, look around, you don't see anything, and as you, you know, she, she won't let you in the back room, of course. You kind of get closer to the door there. She's like, hey, sorry, that's off limits, employees only. This is a, um like a previous memory check um i don't know if it's like just history but it's like what did jay get from her like looking like i know she was looking at us but did jay like sent ill intent or was it just hey those people look odd from what you can see you don't have to roll anything um when you locked eyes you knew that she was looking at you guys the whole time and when she saw that you could that you saw her, she grew very scared and nervous and jumped off the barrels and ran the opposite direction. So from that, you notice she had something to hide or she was she was hiding something or she did not want you to know that she was there. Jay will just mutter under his breath, you win this time. And Jay will uh little girl. <laughs> Yeah, Jay will... Uh, yeah, it's like a Disney movie. What the hell? Why am I the villain in a Disney movie? <laughs> right. A weird hulking Goliath just chasing after someone. What the hell? Alright, uh, Jay will uh, just, like, buy a chocolate bar. Okay. It, uh, oh, no. This is touristy chocolate. This is going to yeah, be, like, it's, 90 it's, zip or something. No, it's, it's one silver for a chocolate bar. One silver? Oh, that's easy. So you get a chocolate bar, you get out, and it's it's okay. It's not it's not the greatest, but well, I am not. Jay is not eating it. Jay is going to give it to the panting Kurgan, who is probably chased after Jay at this right point. Behind, right behind, and you can see behind him a trail of people knocked over, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and on the ground, and there's cabbages everywhere. And he's like, oh, my cabbages. Well, at least let me make some sort of a check. Okay. To not, you know, oh, do of course, that. Of course. 
Give me a dexterity or what? Give me any skill that you want. Give me a 50. Uh, okay, athletics is a plus 8. And that comes to 23. Okay, so he uses it. He, like, almost knocks somebody down, keeps them up, propped up with his strength. He, like, jumps over and dodges everything. And, no, you made it there without any disturbance whatsoever. And... I'm like a little bit past the shop just looking around because I didn't yeah. spot leave go in. No. And I'm just standing there like fast. you're using your <sighs> strength to move people out of the way out of your way. Without, and, you know, hurting them. And without hurting them, of course. Okay, and then you see the hulking Goliath head over everybody. And he walks out of a chocolate store. And Lee, what are you doing, Lee? Uh like also. Alright, why, um, why don't you roll me? Is worried. You can roll me a roll, roll me whatever skill you want. Um I guess athletics. Alright. Fourteen. Alright. So it wasn't you who knocked some people, but in fourteen you didn't miss it off by much. You just didn't knock into the cabbage stand and these cabbages went everywhere. And, uh, and, and he's sitting there mumbling to himself as he's putting his cabbages back up on his car. All right. What is, what is the Bellinac crew doing now? After tossing Kierkegaard in that chocolate bar, the uh, Jace just says, <sighs> someone was watching us and didn't want to be caught. Well, well what did this person look like? Was it like a... A shady man in an alleyway just looking at us behind a mask. Was it like some, somewhat something like that? Uh, a little girl about yay high, um, who is sharpening a knife. A, a child. Yes. We were we were being spied on by a child. Yes, she was specifically looking at us for a while. I mean, maybe it's because they saw us talking and they were like oh i wonder who those people are ah, ba -da, ba -da. and then you look at them and then suddenly you're like wait a second and then they get scared you think that's what happened and they just ran off all i did was make eye contact with her i'm not that scary am i i mean what kind of eye contact was it there's like <laughs> was it like unbroken for like two seconds because in that case it can be pretty weird especially from a stranger Jay looks away, looks back at you, and then looks away again. His eyes are on you for like a second. About that much eye contact. It was odd, oh, okay. so... Maybe you are right. Mm -hmm. And anyone who sprints off at eye contact shouldn't... I don't see why they'd be out of and about with these crowds. Oh, maybe, maybe they were just a pickpocket and they were just looking at us as an, an easy mark or something like that. Jay looks at Lee, looks at Kurgan, looks down at himself, and then just shakes his head. I don't think I'd describe any of us as looking like easy marks. You look like you can stop a bull with your hands. Yeah, I have done that. So... Also, I'm a... Uh, 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 Apparently there's, there might be a serial killer going around. Three people have died recently in town. And also, there's a whole bunch of Zib in it for joining the Boros Legion, though. It seems like it's more military, and I don't want that sort of career. Yeah, and Legion, since it is military, sort of implies, like, a sort of commitment. Like, we can't just run off. Yeah, not without some sort of consequence. Yeah. Hey, that that guy with the B on his shirt, or on his uh, armor, did he at all look uh, similar to those guys wearing, uh, piloting those eagles or whatever they were? Um, you can roll me a perception DM? check. Yeah, you can roll me a perception check. Okay, alright, perception. Looking for a 14. Yeah, that's a total of 20. 
Oh, nice. Yes, definitely had the heart. You can't see, you didn't see the B, but you could definitely tell the color of the uniforms that the angel had and the people on the eagles uh, they were riding. And also the man who kind of stopped somebody from uh, the cult of the purest were all wearing roughly the same uniform. What about that angel we saw? Who are you asking? Did I... Th y you. Oh, what about... <laughs> yes. Yes, the angel... They were all wearing the same thing. What about the angel? Okay. Well, I'm thinking that if we signed up to the Boros, and then we just left town, I'm pretty sure that since they have angels just flying around, that they could probably spare one to, you know, hunt down the traitors. I don't really want to go through that. Yeah. No, I don't think I want to go through that either. Jay looks around and then, like, moves in slightly closer uh, to Kurgan. Um, do you think there might be a way to ask about your, your tribe without being obvious about it i mean how would we how would we mention it would it be like hey i've uh, heard rumors of uh, a bunch of uh, people being who were sent here to ravnica against their will i mean that might work hmm, maybe but i don't know maybe we're when we're not in such a posh area we can ask around for <clears throat> indentured servants Oh, yeah, that's, that's better. Jay will uh, move back away slightly to a normal conversing distance. Jay will, like, ask around to basically try and figure out what the Boros region, Legion is like from, like, I don't know, anyone. Yeah, just really just anyone passing by. Like, he'll, he'll go to... Basically, what he'll do is he'll go to a, like a merchant stand or something, okay. like buy something, sure. like cheap, vaguely that is it won't gonna burn a hole in his pocket, and then go. Oh, by the way, I saw. A po by the way, I saw a poster about the Boros Legion. Is that like a mercenary guild? Oh, the Boros. Uh, yeah, they're kind of the military around here. Uh, it's you know, they're they're good to have around when the. You never know what happens around in, in some of these precincts. Precinct one here, or two, precinct two, we're pretty, we're pretty good around here, but you get to some of the other precincts, it can get pretty hairy. Uh, the girl can pop up whenever you least expect them, or, you know, um, the Galgari sometimes. You just you never know what's going to happen. Uh, it's always good to have the Boris Legion to here to protect us. Uh, they played a huge role when uh, this city was attacked not too long ago. And uh, so, yeah, I'm a big fan of the Boris Legion. Not my mm -hmm. cup of tea, though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't join. I'm just a merchant. Yeah, and... Mm. Now, do you want my potato heads? Here. I made this one. It's got little little eyeballs on it. Here. Well, it, one copper. Oh, like... <laughs> Jay will pick one copper, yep. All right. Toy here's, Story power. Yeah, here's a little... Uh, you know, I put little hole, uh, little feet on them. Here. Here you go. Thank you. Have a good day. So, and Jay will go back to the party and relay this information. Yep. And you, you also see some more posters. You see one that says the, uh, the, uh, the Orzov looking for a good law mage. Join us. Help protect Ravnica. And then you have another one that says looking for a good time. Come down to the Rakdos Circus. And it's got like a, a tiefling, like, like fire, uh, blowing fire out of her mouth. Yeah, I'm not so just sure about off... the Rakdos. I don't, I don't know, just going off the posters, I'm, I'm pretty interested in Rakdos. Don't know why, can't, can't place my finger on it. <laughs> 
It's a red tiefling, you say? <laughs> yep. It's doing fire tricks. I don't think that's your... You know what they say, opposites attract. What's the next one look like? Um, you got a poster that has a couple of goblins and they're putting together some uh, some contraptions like the Izzet League looking for some great engineers. Come join the Izzet League. Oh, engineers. They might be interested in this thing I got with me. Maybe. And you also see another poster. It says, don't like the way your face looks. Need a Tommy Tuck? Well, come join the Simic Combine. Make yourself great again. Oh, we could always, we could always send text that way. Um... Not so Good sure about that. Mm, so many opportunities. So many out of character. So many odd plot hooks we can go and look at. <laughs> but which one would get us the coin? <laughs> you also see another one. There's a uh, there's a bunch of like men carrying garbage. It's like the Galkari swarm looking for some people to collect garbage. Hiring right now. Ten zibs an hour. Oh. If it was like it's like Anything asking for killing monsters, bodyguarding, generic adventuring stuff. <laughs> well, you're in like the we have like section here. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, is there any sign just... that says "Not tourists"? Tourists do not go this way. <laughs> you will die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably the Orzov Syndicate. You know, if you want money, man, you can always go to the oars off. They're all Duh. Is the box something. just following us now? What's <laughs> going yeah, on? Exactly, he's got wheels. Actually, he just he picks it up like he's picking up his skirts and, and walking. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get us to get a loan. Oh my god, man. Nigerian prince, please leave. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> all right, so, so where are you guys heading? Anywhere. Hmm. I think we should try and head to Precinct 3 and we could go along that main uh, oh, not Precinct 3, Precinct 4, sorry. Precinct 3 is like Yeah, so we, we could go like to the Transco Promenade see if anyone has worked for us there then go to Sun Home talk with the Boris Legion and if both those don't work, then we can go to the Eze Guild. Because none of us are engineers, and only having one minor magical item, uh, not sure how much they'll give us for it. Maybe they'll give us a lot, but... Hmm. Maybe they'll give us some sort of, uh, acquisition job, you don't know. Like, what, hey, like a we... corporation? Oh, God. <laughs> more, more like, hey, uh, go, like, get this thing for us and we'll pay you for it, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing re here, right? Repo, man. So, we had the plan of um, taking the road to the Trans Guild. Uh, um, yep. Where are we producing to? Uh, taking, uh, ooh, we passed by, we passed by Boris to get there. So, uh, we'll go uh, from Precinct 2 all the way up to, or try to get all the way up to uh, Sunhaven or whatever it's called, Sunhome. where Boris lives. Okay. Sun and and then, once we deal with that, depending on how it goes, we'll go north to the promenade and look over that, see if there are any odd jobs that uh, suit our stature. And if that doesn't work, we're going to go southwest to Izzet. There is, and you've noticed as you walk closer, you notice that there's people going down these stairs and there's a train system that goes under this, the city. There's a subway. Yo, there's oh, the, we can go on the tube. You can go on the yeah. tube. So, you you wanted to go to precinct, what was it, four you said? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you get down to the, the subway area, and there, to get a ticket, it's going to cost you one silver piece per person to get a, sil to get a ticket. Okay. okay. 
Jay will use it with his money. Okay. Um, I mean, you're like the only one with actual legal tender down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. This is. I hate the way I'm. Do I hate the way I'm doing this. Okay. Um. All right. Okay. Yep. Everyone has a. Uh, everyone has a ticket. Da -da -da -da. All right. So. All of you are waiting for this train. There's a bunch of people around you. A lot of touristy people are coming to and from this uh, this subway platform. Like, and you get on uh, as soon as you see the right. It's kind of hard for you guys to make out. It's overwhelming as you see the. You're like looking at the tube. You're like, does it go left, right? Where do we get off? And some people help you and point you in the right direction. Uh, a lot of people are friendly here and you see the train come to a stop, open up, and you get on in. Jack Daniel. <laughs> so you guys are on the train, uh, sitting down. There is a lot of tieflings around all of you guys, uh, and then they get off at a certain stop, and then all that's left seem to be new recruits uh, of the... Boris Legion. They're very new. Uh, they're kind of nervous, and they're heading towards uh, Precinct Five or Four. Um, you know, Jay is the most charismatic person in the party, obviously. So Jay is going to place like, like, just try and get one's attention. And go, hey, um, you're a new Boris recruit, right? Uh, y yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, I just did the plunge and, and signed up for the Boris Guild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excited to start my training. How long uh, are you contracted to stay at the Boris Guild for long? Like a month or something? A year? Two? Um, so you kind of work your way up from the bottom. Um, you, you can kind of switch guilds if you want, but it's frowned upon. You kind of want to build up yourself into one guild. So we're we just right here started. We start day one with the guild uh, today. It will nod and then look towards Kyrgyz and shrug. Mm. Kyrgyz will shrug back. <laughs> Jay doesn't know. Jay doesn't know what to say. That that's that's a weird system to Jay. Yeah, right. Kind of makes sense because it's meritocracy, but then like you can't change if you're not good at one thing. What? So you. The train comes to a stop. All of they're like, Precinct Four, everybody off Tin Street Alley. Let's go. Anybody, uh, everybody off. We're turning oh, oh, that, around. That's us. That's us. Okay. All right. So, and off we go. So off you guys go. So you guys get dropped off here. All right. So you guys get dropped off at uh, the Bulwark. It's a neighborhood between Sunholm and Nivix. Uh, there are, these structures are reinforced. They have metal attached to them. Uh, pretty low scale apartments and shops. That seems like the people that are, that are set up shops here are here to support the Boris Legion. And so there's a lot of People fixing swords and knives and shields and tailors and people of that kind of supporting the military here, or, and that's where they you get dropped off. Now, all right. Yep. Off to the distance, you see the Nivix. It's a very elegant structure here. Let me read it to you here. It's. Another very tall structure, impressive. It, there's these crackling of wild magic power that of these towers that come up. Um, and this is the main hall for the Is It. So there is a lot of Is It people here also. Um, and there you see them building structures as you, you have to go fly out of the way as these goblins come racing down uh, with a motorbike. Uh, and 
these the wheel falls off and veers off sharply to the left. It seems like it's pretty chaotic <laughs> where you're at right now, unlike the touristy part you just came from. We're not in the upper class anymore. No. Now we're like mid to lower class. Hmm. While we look, I mean, we could still ask around the Boros Legion for like mercenary work because it's not like we're level ones anymore. Yeah. We're we're yeah, like we're decently powerful. Yeah, we're almost level ten. We're kind of okay. Like. Yeah. Exactly. It, even if we wanted to be Boros Legion, which we don't, we wouldn't like start as recruits. But I doubt, like, how how badly, how likely do you think Boros Legions are filthy, or uh, purists? Uh, still have to find out, Well, right? considering mm -hmm. a purist sort of assaulted Lee, and one of the Boros was the person who, you know, kind of stopped that, I'd guess that they're not very purist-y. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but that was also in the tourist section, so... Ooh, that is pretty. There's, that's <laughs> that's the that's the is it Guildgate? Oh well. Mm. Yeah. Almost enough to make me want to become an engineer. <laughs> then I look my intelligence score and I decide never mind. <laughs> I'm thinking that while we're here, we might as well uh, ha take a step into this. Uh, Nivix? Is that what the map says? Yep. Nivix, yeah. Might as well just step in and uh, maybe show someone the rusted piece of crap I've got. Alright. It's not gonna hurt. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. You guys approach Nivix. It is a building that has these blue uh, illuminated towers in red um the the lights are shining bright it's getting kind of midday for you guys right now um there are people working on projects lectures going on people going to and fro this is a very busy place the guild gate that i showed you earlier um people are coming in and out and as you are you guys entering the guild gate Mm-hmm. I believe so. Okay. As you enter um, the building, Unless there's like a sort of front desk on the outside of the building. No, it's it's wide open. You can come on in and as you enter, there's a huge lobby and there are boards that are up on the left and right side uh, that have jobs that you can take uh, in the for the Is It Guild. So if you need to do any jobs here. Money. <laughs> <laughs> yup. There there also is uh another board that has lectures uh and different um rooms that you can listen to lecture and I need someone to roll me perception. Yo, I think Jay is gonna have fun doing that. 30. <laughs> you see, there is a juzba on the lecture uh, table. A what? A juzba. Name juzba. There is a Dr. Oh. Juzba giving a oh. lecture. Oh! Okay. Uh, do you point this name out to people or no? <laughs> sure. Should I know who that is? <laughs> yes, you should, because he just said, uh, he showed you this contraption and said, hey, should we sell it? And he said, Juzba. So, okay. it's on it's on the back of your head. Alright. Or the back of my back, to be more <laughs> specific. Exactly. So, uh, Jay will nudge Kurgan and point at Juzba. And, uh... Ooh, Juzba. <laughs> yep. Lecture Hall H. Uh, okay, does it look like we have to pay some sort of admission fee um, to get in look, there? No, it doesn't look like it right now. Oh, okay. Uh, so I uh, I can just hang out in that lecture hall uh, waiting for the lecture to end and just 
see what I can get from Juzba for Juzba's Juzba device. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. It's a um, smoothie maker. Yeah. Uh, uh, you guys, uh, if you think you can handle it without me, maybe take a job. I don't know, maybe uh, that one. And I just point to whatever one, doesn't matter. It might be like, oh, kill a dragon or, oh, move a box. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna wait in the lecture hall and see what I can get for this thing. Okay, so let's go with the um, lecture hall right now. So you take your uh, machine, you're saying, uh, I'll be right back. And you kind of, they ask around probably to figure out where this room is at and they point you in the right direction. And there's these two doors that are closed and there's a big H on the doors. You can hear on the other side, there is talking. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just gonna... Like, uh, is there like a little window on the door or no? Let's go with yes, sure. There's a little window. Okay. Okay, all right, all right. I am going to... Uh... I guess I'm just going to open the door, maybe take a seat near the back. I'm assuming there's seats. Okay. Roll me roll me a stealth check. I want to make sure you're nice and quiet. Oh, here. God. Uh, just oh, a ten. God. Just I've a got ten. a plus one. Oh, 15. Okay. So you're able to slip it open. Just the people around the door kind of look at you oddly as you're entering close to the tail end of this lecture. And there's this big giant board uh, chalkboard off in the distance. This is probably holds, this room holds around 75 to 100 people. And he's on, oh. there's this man, or actually there's this goblin that is at a chalkboard and he's writing down and talking about this formula. And it's hard, it's probably hard for you to understand the subject by sitting at the start of this uh, lecture, but this is the tail end. And pretty pretty soon, he ends it, and people start getting up. They clap a little bit, and now they're milling their way out. Uh, before uh, the goblin manages to leave, I stand up with my backpack, not on my back, but on but in my hand. I walk to his uh, desk or whatever, yep. and I just introduce myself. Uh, hello, uh, Professor. I've... Um, uh, I, I, I've seen your name before, and I, uh, I kind of uh, have something here that oh. you might be interested in seeing. Oh, let, let me see that. And as you reach out, his hands almost... He, he had an audible gasp, and his hands start to tremor as he holds this. And he's like, I never thought I'd see something like this. This is a fully intact replica of my grandfather's work. And that's where we'll leave it tonight. Dun dun dun. Not <laughs> grandfather. Don't worry, it's coming. Don't worry, it's coming. Jesus, all the